Hey there, war gamers. So today I'm working on two of your next videos for the vault here. Uh, one of them is going to be in addition to the um, DV that's about to come out as soon as I guess I get this done. Um, it's uh, going to be on flyers. Chris is going to be doing a um, Storm Talon, and I'm going to be doing uh, one of the variants of the Orc uh, Bama. And I'm pretty sure I've settled on... Hold on a second. Which one is it? I think it's the Burna Bama. And the reason that I want this one is because it's got the domed uh, Grot Gunner canopy. I think that one looks super cool. I have been informed by Dan that uh, one of the more popular configurations, at least game-wise, is the Docket Jet. But I gotta tell you, the Docket Jet is boring. There's not a whole lot of stuff on it. There's no Grot Bomber or Grot Gunner. There's no bombs hanging off the bottom of it. It's just pretty uh, plain Jane, if you ask me. So uh, I wanted to make a really cool. Uh, painting tutorial for you guys and I think this one's gonna be way better in my opinion um, not to mention it looks like there's just less stuff on this like there's there's some cool like engine parts like the the hoses coming out of the engine like on the docket jet it just sort of goes into the wing but like there's like a nice big hunk of tubing that goes around um, on all the rest of them but one of the things that I'm doing in this one that I haven't done in the past is I'm actually doing um, assembly as part of this. And the reason that we're doing that is um, partly, I guess, from uh, request, where we've been asked to, to do some stuff on cleaning, um, but also because um, I think it's really important to go over how to assemble a model like this that's so detailed and has so many parts if you're going to airbrush it. Um, I've been told that Chris is doing his mostly with a traditional bristle brush, whereas I'm going to be trying to do mine as close to 100% uh, airbrush as possible. Um, it's not going to be 100%, but it'll be as close as I can get it. There will just be some parts that I'm just not going to be able to do uh, with the airbrush and get the like top-notch level of detail that I think you guys deserve out of these videos uh, with airbrush only. Um, I will do pretty much the entire plane with an airbrush, but um, there will be parts for the interior, like some of the little lights and dials and things, and some of the details on the orcs that are piloting it. Um, those will, will certainly be um, done with a bristle brush. I'll get the base coats and stuff down with the airbrush, maybe even some of the shading, but you know, I can't do a check pattern on a scarf with an airbrush, at least not easily. It'd take a lot of masking and it would be very obnoxious. Anyway, um, I thought I'd chat with you guys about uh, some stuff while I was assembling this. This is kind of like a backstage kind of deal, I guess. Um, um, I'm also working on another uh, tutorial right now. It's actually a piece of Nurgle terrain, and um, I paused on that briefly to go ahead and do the the um, burn a jet or burn Obama. And um, I really like the uh, the way this Nurgle terrain is coming out. And um, I'll show you in just a minute. I'm going to move the camera in a sec to to show you more of what I'm doing here. Um, and I'll, I'll show you some close-ups of the Nurgle stuff that's in progress right now. Um, I, I don't often get the opportunity to, um, to really do a lot of sculpting anymore, but with this piece of Nurgle terrain, I just had to, to go for the gusto and try to, to bring some really cool, disgusting stuff to the table, because when it comes to Nurgle, there can't be, there, there's never too much gross. You can always have more uh, filth and bile and gross stuff, and it just ne it's never enough. Um, some of the Forge World stuff that they did, the Great Unclean one, I think it was the character, Great Unclean one, I, I'm not sure what his name was, giant festering nastiness with the gut spilling out. That was kind of part of my inspiration. I didn't try and copy it directly, but uh, this one is actually supposed to be a 
dead great unclean one. So it um, should be should be interesting uh, how it turns out. Because I did part of it out of uh, polymer clay, and then I'm also doing um, I'm also doing some of the surface details, I guess, out of green stuff or milliput. Uh, I got most of the detail I want out of the Fimo, or it's not actually Fimo, it's, uh, I think it's another, it's kind of like a knockoff, uh, it's called Primo, uh, but it's made by uh, Sculpey, which is a pretty big name as far as oven-baked clay for, you know, artists go. Um, and most of the guys that I've seen uh, who are like real, like industry sculptors for war game stuff have... Um, have either been working in solid green stuff or Fimo. Some of the guys from Rackham Studios used to use Fimo a lot, um, and uh, I think it just gets some crazy detail. I've never been able to accomplish the the level of complexity they've been able to out of nothing but Fimo. Um, I can only really use it on like giant stuff, like this great unclean one that I'm working on right now, um, and. It's, it's been a challenge, but it's been fun, and I'm really looking forward to see how it turns out. Um, I also got to use some more uh, stuff that I'm, I'm a big fan of that I don't get to use that often just because um, usually I don't have the time to do it because uh, it just it takes too long to dry, and that is uh, uh, not evergreen. Um, Woodland Scenics Moldesine Plaster. It's great stuff really great um, and uh, it it just it takes a long time to dry though it takes at least a day uh, or two depending on the weather because uh, I like to leave it out in the garage and if it's cold outside it takes forever to dry so I usually bring it in at that point but um, recently you know we've been getting you know here in North Carolina uh, temperatures of you know, 90 or so degrees during the day, and my oven turn or my oven, <laughs> my garage turns into an oven, and um, I can get faster dry times out of things out there, but the humidity also slows it down a little bit because it's not just hot here; it's like swimming around in a sauna. Uh, it's pretty rough. I think North Carolina actually. I, I read this statistic at one point. It's got the worst air quality out of anywhere in the U.S. Aside from. Uh, like as a state, obviously, you know, you're going to find pockets like New York City and stuff like that. But um, it's just like we have so much plant life here. It's just always like full pollen and humidity saturation. I It's it's pretty it's pretty rough here during like the big bloom seasons. So especially because it's usually coupled with heat and humidity and grossness. But uh we just stay inside, try not to have heat strokes. So, uh, anyway, just trying to clip all these parts out. There's so many parts on this kit, it's crazy. Um, I, I love it though, it's very cool. I like, I never get to do orky stuff. And it's always been one of those things that I love to do when I get the opportunity to, because it's, so many cool conversions and like looting opportunities you get with them it's just really really super cool oh that's another part i didn't even realize it the um there's some little like pontoon kind of things that go on the tips of the wings but they only go on the burn obama so that's really cool i like these they look really cool oh they're like little little uh like fuel tanks or something i think they've got little explosion symbols on the side. I guess that's not really indicative of what's in it. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is super cool. I, I like these new flyer kits. Um, and I think I'm going to be able to do some really cool stuff with this tutorial, too. Because, I mean, with the orcs, I can do all kinds of weathering and rust effects and some really intense battle damage. Uh, stuff that you just can't get away with on a lot of other armies. Like, you know, if I did uh, a Necron ship or something like that, they are, you know, don't get me wrong, they look really cool and they're super sleek and they're, uh, they, they are just as delicious eye candy as any other ones of the, uh, <clears throat> the new flyers. But, uh, 
I just I feel like they always have to be so clean and precise. Um, I guess I could do something that looks aged and rusted and stuff, but I just figure that the Necrons would be way cleaner than the Orcs would, you know? Uh, it just doesn't fit their style to be as, you know, ramshackle, hodgepodge as, um, as the Orcs would be. Okay, so let me show you some of the stuff I'm working on now. Well, I've, you obviously can see that I've got a whole bunch of the Orc stuff here on the table. Um, I'm going to move that off to the side for a sec here. And I'll show you the... Um, here is the base for this Nurgle piece that I'm working on now. Uh, or will be working on again after the, the flyer's done. Um, this is the, the Moldesine plaster that I was talking about. Um, it comes, it almost looks like, like grits or some sort of oatmeal or cereal or something that needs to be cooked. Um, and then when you add the water to it, it turns into something that looks kind of like wet sand. And you just sort of press in and smooth it down to the surfaces you want. It doesn't stick exceptionally well to just raw foam like this, but I'm going to be adding some other um, sealers down to sort of help it stick. Um, and then on top of this, this is where the giant, like, dead, unclean one is going to go. And he is right here. So, um, lots of lovely and disgusting things happening on him. Um, so, we got lots of boils and um, cool, giant open wounds. And look at these stakes in him. They're, they're not in there right now, like glued but uh, once I get done painting them I want to stick them back in this is supposed to be a dead great unclean one I just figured uh, those more probably aren't the you know killing blow obviously but just something that you know someone I guess improv trying to slow him down a little bit uh, but then I guess the killing blow would be the fact that the entire back of his head is just sort of blown out here and I want to have some cool um, drippy goopy things happening out the back and I even managed to uh, score some of the new uh, Nurglings out of the new Plague Bearer set. So some of them are like swinging on little pieces of intestine or sinew or something. I really want to have one of them like hanging out back here, like on his back, just like repelling off of him, off of like a little piece of you know, tendon or something. Um, and then I don't know if you can see really well under this camera. This is not the best camera in the world, but... Uh, I've got some interesting skin textures going on here, um, trying to get almost like an elephant skin sort of pattern. Uh, and for that, I actually took um, a mold of the back of my hand, like right on my knuckles, uh, where you get a lot of that um, sort of fleshy, wrinkled sort of look. And um, I did that with the, the instant mold uh, stuff. You just sort of heat it up and press it on. Um, you have to be careful not to burn yourself with it, but you know, you let it cool to a reasonable temperature and then you do it. But, uh, and then I just used that to press into this clay when it was still wet. Um, and this is the, that Primo stuff I was talking about from Sculpey. And uh, this isn't solid clay, I actually did a, a big tinfoil blob armature. Um, and you'll see all this in the video, but, um, yeah, um, I'm liking this. And some of the facial details I'll probably work on some. Uh, with Milliput afterwards, just because, uh, I don't know, like, he was kind of blah. I think I'll probably do some interesting stuff with, like, blood and guts effects and some washes and things uh, once I get going, but my my main intent was to to really make a, a giant rolly blob uh, sort of greater demon of Nurgle. Um, and I think I, I accomplished it. In fact, um, there have been several people who have looked at it and just said, you know what, I don't think I want to look at that anymore. Um, they're kind of grossed out by it. Now, granted, um, I, I guess, you know, maybe I should preface that with the fact that the, the main person who says that is my wife, and uh, when it comes to this type of thing, I suppose she doesn't have the strongest of stomachs. Um, which is kind of strange because she watches tons and tons of horror movies. But anyway, that's that's beside the point. I'll move back to Wargaming stuff. Um, but yeah, he's going to be hanging out up top here. I'm going to have loads of nasty, awful bile streaming out of his mouth and down uh, his body and then onto the, the area around. 
I also want to have some uh, like fallen archways you know around here maybe a little piece of a wall kind of up on this platform I wanted it to look kind of like you know it was a ruined temple of some kind um, but yeah I, I like the way this is this is coming along and I'll get back to this one just as soon as I get this flyer uh, taken care of which is also going to be really pretty rocking in my opinion I've been stoked to get my hands on one of these new flyer kits and the orc one is certainly impressive um, and I've actually been chatting with one of the guys at Cromlech recently and if you're not familiar with them they do a lot of third-party orc conversion parts and uh, he's gonna send me some stuff to review and I really want to do a painting tutorial with some of it because they have got some just stunningly beautiful uh, sculpts for orc uh, miniatures that um, they look like they're perfectly compatible with the 40k you know the actual games workshop stuff uh, but um, they look like they're straight out of like World War II um, just really cool like trench coat guys with um, sort of the German helmets and um, World War II inspired orc weapons and yeah, they just look super super cool and especially the ones with the gas masks I just can't get enough of gas masks but um, so I've also been doing a little bit of commission work too just trying to get uh, a couple projects underway here's one of the Carnivians I'm doing um, and uh, I'm liking the way these guys are turning out the color scheme that the, the uh, client requested is actually pretty awesome like when I when I first started working on it and I didn't have any of the washes or dry brushing or shading or highlighting anything done just the base colors down I was really getting a little concerned because it looks kind of funny with the bright blue skin and then the mouth was really ultra bright pink and then I had two 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 shades of gray and this sort of sandy yellow ochre on the underbelly and the claws and stuff I was just like oh boy what have I gotten myself into um, but the the pictures that he sent along with this color scheme um, you know, I just had to keep reminding myself you know it's gonna look good when you finally get it done um, but uh, yeah I got this and uh, the rest of the the Legion battle box to do for him plus uh, a unit of I think they're called um, war spears they're the well here I'll show you they are the uh, big sort of like Ogren looking guys with spears um, it's kind of hard to something yeah there we go yeah this is the leader of the unit and uh, I've fought against these guys at least once before and they're pretty tough dudes uh, they do not mess around and then uh, we've got um, a couple of uh, or the shredders from the box another carnivian this one's metal actually which um, I'm sorely disappointed in just because I love painting the big plastic ones yeah I pick it up, toss it around, paint doesn't chip off of it. I like look at this one funny and all the paint comes off. Um, and then I can't remember what these guys are. I think they're like Death Stalkers or Death Striders or something. Um, and then uh, a Forsaken and obviously uh, Lilith who comes in the box. And um, he asked me to magnetize the bow hand, I guess just for ease of storage. Oh, this one back. There we go. Um, because I guess that is a little awkward. I think it comes plastic, like it's it's put together like that. There's no way it poses except with the bow out, and just being able to turn it sideways to store it uh, makes it a little easier. So anyway, I'm glad that one was plastic and not metal as well. I've also got another commission that I'm working on right now, and I don't have it like within hand reach up here, but I'll see if I can find it uh, or not find it. I know where it is. Uh, see if I can uh, squeeze it into one of the, the next vlogs before it gets sent back out. It's under a rather uh, quick time constraint, so I don't have time to really do anything major with it, like shoot a tutorial on how I'm doing it or anything. Uh, but it's a storm wall from Signar, and uh, I know you've seen some of Dan's. Um, I think, or he's got one of them. Um, he's been collecting uh, Signar pretty hot and heavy. And getting them painted to quick too anyway um yeah this storm wall uh, is going to be a pretty cool project he wants it exactly like the box art and uh needs it pretty 
fast turnaround. I think he may be taking it to Gen Con or some such thing. So, anyway. But, uh, yeah, I think that'll be it for this evening. And I uh, hope you tune in for some of these lovely tutorials I'm putting together for you guys. And uh, the DVD this is going to be featured in with uh, Chris's Storm Talon. So just uh, keep your eyes peeled for those things. And for new episodes of uh, my Benchmark show here, um, why don't you guys leave me some comments about things that you'd like for me to, uh, to talk about in my show or things that um, you know might not be worthy of an entire tutorial, but um, you'd just like me to, to show you real quick, like some, some quick techniques or things like that or um, just basic stuff that really doesn't need an entire tutorial but would be cool to, to see uh, and that you think that I have some expertise in. Um, basically anything painting, anything terrain tutorial I could probably uh, answer for you. So leave me some questions. I'd love to have a community discussion with you guys. Anyway, I will catch you in the next video, uh, whichever uh, form that might take, whether it's a tutorial or a vlog. And I hope you uh, have a lovely evening and happy wargaming.